we know in the uh, New Testament there are a number of letters that are a number of places that Paul wrote uh, more than one letter to. Corinthians and Thessalonians. We have one letter to the Philippians. However, in this passage today, you will notice that he refers to some people by name. And I'm going to read you those names before I read you the lesson, in case I mess up the names during the lesson. You'll know that it was a name that I was trying to read. And those names are Euodia, names we don't really name our children or grandchildren anymore. Syntica, uh, let's see, Euodia, Syntica, Sizicus, and uh, Clement is a, a more uh, familiar name. So we have the feeling that Paul probably wrote other letters to this group of people, and you will see in the lesson that he's familiar with what's going on, the, the dynamics in the church. He even refers to a conflict, if you can believe that, a conflict within the church. <laughs> between two of these people. So it helps us to understand the lesson if we think of it in terms of, of, of probably an ongoing relationship that Paul has with these Christian people, these people in the city of Philippi that he's writing to and probably had written to at other times letters that somehow were lost or perhaps even incorporated into this letter that we have in the New Testament. Dear friends, says Paul, I love you so much. I do want the very best for you. You make me feel such joy. You fill me with such pride. Don't waver. Stay on track. Steady in God. I urge Euodia and Syntica to iron out their differences and make up. God doesn't want his children holding grudges. And oh yes, Sisychus, since you're right there to help them work things out, do your best with them. These women worked for the message hand in hand with Clement and me, and with other veterans. Worked as hard as any of us. Remember, their names are also in the Book of Life. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up at any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, on things noble and reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 